Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this Thursday night um, <clears throat> recording and this Thursday night time to study from the Word of God. Can I invite you to turn to the book of Daniel? Tonight we are looking at Daniel chapter 4 and so I would invite you to turn in your Bible. We're going to begin at verse 18 and read to the end of the chapter. <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar has had another dream and we're breaking into the story where he asks uh, Daniel uh, to interpret what this dream is about. So, so Daniel uh, chapter 4 and verse 18. This is the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now, Belteshazzar, or Daniel, tell me what it means, for none of the wise men in my kingdom can interpret it for me. But you can, because the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel, also called Belteshazzar, was greatly perplexed for a time, and his thoughts terrified him. So the king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you. Belteshazzar answered, My lord, if only the dream applied to your enemies and its meaning to your adversaries, the tree you saw, which grew large and strong with its top, touching the sky visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all, giving shelter to the beasts of the field and having nesting places in its branches for the birds of the air, you, O king, are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. You, O king, saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump, bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field, while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live like the wild animals until seven times pass by for him. This is the interpretation, O king. and This is the, the decree the Most High has issued against my lord the king. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. The command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Therefore, O King, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that your, then your prosperity will continue. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence? By my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. The words were still on his lips when a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people, and he ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven, until his hair grew like the feathers of an, of an eagle, and his nails like the claws of a bird. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven, and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honoured and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion 
His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time that my sanity was restored, my honour and splendour were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisers and nobles sought me out, and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven, because everything he does is right, and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Amen. And we ask for the Lord's blessing. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we thank you this evening that you are the Lord God Almighty. You are the Most High. You are the Sovereign One. You are the One full of majesty and power, dominion and authority. And yet you have loved us with an everlasting love. We thank you that you do what is right and just. And we thank you that you are the God who's able to humble uh, the proud. And Lord, we worship and we praise you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the privilege of being able to gather to read the scriptures and to think together of what they are saying to us. And we do just ask again that as we spend this Thursday night doing this, that your Holy Spirit would come Give us an understanding and an insight. May we see Christ in the scriptures. May we be blessed. May we be challenged. May we be rebuked. May we be encouraged. And all for the glory of your great name and for the furtherance of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Daniel 4 is... A Daniel uh, is, a, is, is, a, is a chapter of, of high drama. And of course, it is linked with all that has gone before. Daniel 4 is an extraordinary piece of inspired uh, literature which recounts the religious experience of none less than Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And as I've said, the experience that we read about here in chapter 4 is, doesn't appear out of the blue. There is a context to it. Right from the beginning of this book of Daniel, we notice that Nebuchadnezzar has been impressed by these young Hebrew men. And most impressive of all, uh, Daniel uh, he was the one who we read of in chapter 2 that was able to not only recount but interpret uh, that first dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And back in chapter 2, uh, we read that Nebuchadnezzar said, Daniel 2 verse 47, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries for you were able to reveal this mystery an impression had been made on Nebuchadnezzar but impressions fade and then there were the dramatic events of Daniel chapter 3 with the erecting of that golden statue on the plains of Dura the refusal of Daniel's young colleagues, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, their refusal to bow down and worship the statue and the extraordinary miracle that unfolded in the fiery furnace. Back in chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar had asked the question, what God will be able to rescue you? And back in chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar had been given an answer to his own question. Daniel 3 verse 29, Nebuchadnezzar says, For no other God can 
can save in this way. He had asked what God can save. No other God can save in this way. Once again, an impression has been made on Nebuchadnezzar. Surely God was speaking to Nebuchadnezzar. I believe so. And you know in the scriptures it recounts various stories of, of people who, who hear the word of God. Some of them listen, some of them do not. Think of Pharaoh hearing the word of God through Moses. Think of Naaman uh, hearing the word of God through a servant girl. We think of Herod hearing the word of the Lord through the prophet John the Baptist. We think of Felix hearing the word of God through the Apostle Paul. And here, this story tonight, and this account in Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar is, is hearing God speak through Daniel. And Daniel 4 really recounts the story of how King Nebuchadnezzar was, was brought in very dramatic ways to not only hear but to really hear in a way that brought him to bow the knee to the Lord God Jehovah. So let's let's rehearse the story and let's do so by, by picking up a, a phrase that occurs actually it occurs six times in uh, the chapter and it's the phrase the Most High, and um, maybe I'll just take a moment to draw your attention um, to it. You can see it there, first of all, in verse uh, 2, the Most High God. Then you see it in verse 17, the Most High, down to verse uh, 24, and you'll see it again. And then also verse 25, and then verse 32, and the last one is verse 34. And often in passages like this, when there's a phrase that is being used again and again, it's a significant thing. And so I just want to maybe rehearse the story, uh, picking up on that recurrent uh, phrase. My first heading is just simply testimony to the Most High. Testimony to the Most High. And we, we really look here at the very start of the, of the chapter. Look at verse uh, 1. King Nebuchadnezzar, to the peoples, nations, and men of every language who live in all the world, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. And that's why I call it, I'm giving it the title, the testimony to the Most High. In many ways you might say Nebuchadnezzar is here. He is literally bearing testimony to what God, the Most High, has done for him. And basically the story is that he has had another dream. Uh, verses 4 and 5. I had a dream. Uh, he has had another dream. Verses 6 and 7 tell us that none of the so-called wise men are either able or willing to interpret what this dream is and once again Nebuchadnezzar turns uh, to uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel is brought in, you can see that there in verses 8 and uh, 9 and then from verse, from verse 10 uh, through to verse uh, 16 we are told what the dream uh, was 
and if you look at those verses you can you can see it very uh, very clearly uh, basically verse 10 there um, these are the visions I saw while lying in my bed. I looked and there before me stood a tree. So it was a dream about a tree. And it's a great tree. It's a large tree, enormous tree, reaching up to the heavens and so on and so forth. But then the tree is cut down. It's cut down uh, to a stump. Verse 14, he called in a loud voice, cut down the tree, trim off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its uh, fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches. Verse 15, but let the stump and its roots bound with iron and bronze remain in the ground, in the grass of uh, the field. And then in the following verses, end of 15 and 16, um, it speaks about uh, being reduced, about the mind being changed from that of a man to that of an animal till seven times pass by. Verse 16, let his mind be changed from that of a man and let him be given the mind of an animal till seven times pass by for him. Verse 17, the decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of men. So, so basically this first section is Nebuchadnezzar's testimony to the Most High and he's basically saying I've had a dream uh, no one has been able to interpret it for me. It's about a great tree that is cut down to the, the stump and then a person is reduced uh, very drastically and significantly for a, for a period of seven uh, times. The second heading I have here is not just testimony to the Most High, but a warning from the Most High. And this really brings us into the heart of uh, Daniel uh, chapter 4, uh, where, where Daniel is brought in and he is asked to interpret. And so what we're going to notice here is the interpretation and then to look at really what it's, what it's saying uh, to us. Uh, so verse 18, we, we read that at the very beginning. Um, and as I said, Belteshazzar, uh, uh, the name that had been given to Daniel and he's brought in and he is asked to give the interpretation. And what is the interpretation? Well, uh, Daniel begins by, by saying, um, well, Nebuchadnezzar, if only this had been someone else. But Nebuchadnezzar, verse 22, you, O king, are that tree. You are the tree. And here's the interpretation, uh, verse uh, 24. Do you see it there? Let me read verse uh, 24. This is the interpretation, O king. and This is the decree the Most High has issued against my Lord, uh, the king. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign. Nebuchadnezzar, you're the tree. You're going to be reduced. You're going to be brought into a very different place where you're terribly reduced for a period of seven, uh, seven times. But the good news is your kingdom, verse 26, will be restored. You see that there? Your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven uh, rules. Therefore, says, 
says Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar, turn from your sinful ways, renounce your sinful ways. What a moment as Daniel stands before one of the mightiest men in all the earth and calls him to repent of his sins. And then we're simply told, verse 28, all this happened and we're told that one year passes. So one year passes from Daniel gives the interpretation and during that one year, um, the cynic could have said, well, so much for that. Nothing happened. But 12 months later, we're told that Nebuchadnezzar is out walking, um, surveying the beauty of the city, surveying the beauty of his residence, surveying the beauty of his gardens, congratulating himself. You see it there, verse 30. Is not this the great Babylon I have built by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? And we're told that literally as Nebuchadnezzar is congratulating himself, verse 31 and 32, that a voice comes from heaven. This is what de is decreed for you, Nebuchadnezzar. Your authority is being taken away. And do you see there in verse uh, 32 what it says? Something I want you to draw your attention to. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he pleases. That, that phrase, the Most High, sovereign over the kingdoms of men, gives them to anyone he, he pleases. It's, it's found back in verse 17 and also uh, in verse 25. It's a significant phrase. And we're told here in verse 33 that Nebuchadnezzar is reduced. See, God is the most high and God is not to be mocked. And that's what I mean uh, when I give uh, this this little section, a warning from the Most High. He is not to be mocked. He is the one who is over all things. And this chapter really stands in many ways as a, as a warning to all who will hear, to all who will listen. You see, my essential point is this. God was speaking to Nebuchadnezzar. I've already mentioned that. He's been speaking to Nebuchadnezzar for a period of time and through different situations. But Nebuchadnezzar has kept, if you, if you like, resisting and putting off, making any response to what he's hearing and what he's seeing. I wonder tonight, is that a picture of you, that God has been speaking to you. You have been hearing his word. You have been hearing the gospel. You have been hearing the claims of Christ. You have been hearing the message of Christ crucified and risen and coming again. And in your own heart, you have been moved, impressed. You've been saying, yes, this is true. And I really do need to respond to this. But another part of you has been saying, well, maybe some other day. There's a great danger in that. You know, every time people hear the gospel preached and they sort of refuse to respond, they push back the appeal. In some way, they... They narrow the, the circle, if you like, of the, the divine influence within their own lives. A preacher uh, once said, and I quote what he said, he said this, Some of you are making your own salvation more and more impossible. 
because you're hearing the word of God without obeying. To be gospel hardened is, is a far worse thing than to be sin hardened. That is what was happening with Nebuchadnezzar. End of quotation. Opportunity had knocked for Nebuchadnezzar. An opportunity knocks every time a person hears the call of the gospel. Even now, as people hear this message, opportunity comes knocking on the door. And part of the big warning of Daniel 4 is that God's not going to be mocked. That you don't mess around with these things. And that you do not keep resisting. Lest the judgment falls. And an awful judgment did come on Nebuchadnezzar. God was speaking to him and Nebuchadnezzar kept putting it off and off and one day as he walked in his garden congratulating himself the judgment fell. We do not know exactly all that has happened here but we do know we could put it this way, that within the hour, Nebuchadnezzar had lost his mind. You know, some people say if you take religion too seriously, it might drive you mad. Here is a case of someone who did not take the Most High God seriously enough. And it drove him mad. The illness that Nebuchadnezzar displayed has been diagnosed as lycanthropy. One consultant psychiatrist uh, writes this, and I quote, As far as Nebuchadnezzar's illness is concerned, the features are of a fairly acute onset of insanity with the apparent delusional idea that he was an animal. Unquote. Very solemn uh, situation, isn't it? See, the man who could not or would not make up his mind that man was Nebuchadnezzar. Tell me tonight, is that your story? You cannot or you will not make up your mind. And I appeal to you this evening to stop that lest something terrible happens. God's spirit does not always strive with man. And remember this, this was happening to Nebuchadnezzar not because of his great sins and crimes though they were many but because he kept resisting the claims of God upon his life. He kept promoting himself rather than humbling himself before the Most High God. And you know, in the Gospel, this is why people are lost. Not because of the terrible things that they may have done. But because they keep on resisting the claims of Christ upon their lives. And this is a really important thing to understand. 
Don't let your past sins, large and small, keep you from the gospel. And you know, sometimes people um, find this a stumbling block. And for some people, there's almost this sense, well, I couldn't come to God, I couldn't come to Jesus because of what I've done. Well, that's precisely the reason that you ought to run to Jesus. Run to him and experience his amazing grace. The hymn that we've enjoyed singing a few times over the last few months, Our sins, they are many, but his mercy is more. Isn't that wonderful? And so we have in this story here in Daniel uh, chapter 4, this story of how it's a testimony to the Most High and a warning from the Most High. And the end of the story is really praise of the Most High. Because the wonderful thing is here that Nebuchadnezzar, he did eventually experience the grace of God. Look at verse 34 tells us. At the end of this time, at the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored. Praise God. Then I pr praised the Most High and I honoured and glorified him who lives forever. And basically verses 30, the end of verse 34 uh, through to 37 is how I acknowledge is Nebuchadnezzar comes to truly acknowledge the Lord God and we have here his humble confession of faith. Then I praised the Most High. Verse 35 is, is worthy of repeating again and again. Look at it. It's one of those verses to mark. Well, the last wee bit of 34. His dominion is, an, er is an, er an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? One of the commentators uh, says that this is the most comprehensive statement about the sovereignty of God found anywhere in the Old Testament. Extraordinary. And then verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride he is able to humble. What a wonderful confession of, of faith that comes from the lips of King Nebuchadnezzar. God is God. God is great. God is just. God is right. God is the God who opposes the proud, and he blesses the humble. Sinclair Ferguson in his commentary on Daniel makes a wee comment and he says this, beyond the pages of scripture, there are some second-hand evidence existing that a strange event did occur in Nebuchadnezzar's life. Well, it was an extraordinary turnaround. Nebuchadnezzar has been humbled before God and he has humbled himself before God and he has truly turned uh, to the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar is, is a changed man, we believe. He's different, he's been turned around. He's been converted. So here in Daniel uh, chapter 4, we have this 
wonderful account of Nebuchadnezzar being humbled by the Lord, hearing again the word of the Lord, and yes, through very sobering and dramatic circumstances, being brought in repentance and humbling of his own heart to turn to the Most High God. And that's why it begins and ends with this wonderful testimony. And again, as it says at the beginning of Daniel uh, chapter 4, it's my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. God has been good. God has done something wonderful in my life. You know, that's really the heart of the gospel, isn't it? That God would touch each of us and bring us, yes, maybe through different circumstances, some dramatic, some less dramatic, but bring us is the key thing to that place where we're humble before him, where we acknowledge him as our king, as our God, as our saviour. And we want others to know about it. We have a testimony. Tell me tonight as I finish. Do you have a testimony? Are you able to bear testimony? I'm not asking you is it some big dramatic story. That's not what I'm asking you at all. I'm simply asking, are you able to bear testimony? Are you willing to bear testimony that maybe after long years doing your own thing, resisting God, uh, resisting the call of God, that you're brought to a place where you say, Lord, here I am, take me and save me and prepare me for all that's to come. And if that's the case, well, praise the Lord. And if it's not yet the case, well, it's my genuine prayer uh, this evening that even before this day is done, that you would bow the knee to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, and receive him as your God, as your Saviour, as your King, and as your friend. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this extraordinary story of Nebuchadnezzar being brought to bow the knee Yes, three very dramatic and drastic and sobering events. But Lord, you were merciful to him. Lord, our sins, they are many, but his mercy is more. And we bless you, Lord, that whether we're a Nebuchadnezzar or um, just, Lord, whoever we are, that you're able to come and share your mercy within our hearts as we bow the knee to Jesus. So Lord, we do just pray that you would bless this word to all of our hearts and grant, O oh God, that maybe there's even one person listening to this tonight who has not yet bowed the knee, who has been resisting all these years. Lord, that even now that you would humble us and bring us to that place of simple repentance and faith. Lord, bless us within our own family situations. Bless us, O oh God, within the church family. Continue to lead and guide us, O God, as we seek wisdom as regards what is best uh, for these coming days and weeks and months. Remember all those within our family circles and friendship circles who are maybe not so well at this time, who are struggling with various things. And we do just commit all who are on our heart tonight to you. Continue to lead us and guide us as we wait upon you in prayer in our own homes. We thank you again for this time around your word and we ask this prayer in Jesus name. Amen.